These are the Kylin FPV goggles, provided for review by GearBest.com. They're a very promising entry-level way to get into FPV. It comes with a single-cell LiPo battery conveniently stored up at the top, and it even has a mini USB port for you to charge it. Most other goggles require you to charge the battery externally, and most also don't come with a power button, and this one does. It has a built-in 5.8GHz video receiver with like 64 channels, as well as on-screen channel selection and an auto-scan feature so you can easily find your channel and other people's channels and watch them fly. The display actually looks really great. If you look at the specs, you may see that the resolution is 800 by 480 which sounds really low compared to like TVs and cell phones, but that's actually the same resolution as my $400 Fat Shark goggles. You just can't really broadcast a higher resolution with analog technology. The user interface works through the on-screen display and is controlled with the side button. It even has a battery life indicator up at the top. So my initial review is that these are clean and compact and full of great features, but the battery location might make the nose a little bit heavy, and when I tried it on, the fit was a little bit funny. Also, there's a little bit of light leakage in the sides, but that's really not that bad and it's really easy to fix. If you want to fly FPV, I recommend some kind of goggles rather than like a monitor, because it forces you to fly only with reference to the video feed, and it's just much more immersive. When comparing these to the Headplay HDs, the Headplays don't seem as polished, and yet they cost $250, but they do have a much better fit. These only cost $100, making them a very promising first pair to get into FPV, or as an extra set to let guests fly along with you. Okay, this is Josue, and uh, he just started this FPV stuff like, uh, how, what, a, two months ago? Or? Probably, yeah, less than three months ago. Yeah, and so he's never owned his own uh, video goggles before, and so uh, with this opportunity, I let him borrow this for the last, like, week? Week and like, a half. Week and a half. Yeah. yeah, and he's been using it with his quad over there. And so what have you found about these? I found that I really like them. Uh, I like the fact that uh, you let me borrow them. <laughs> because I don't, I can't, right now, I can't afford expensive goggles like Fat Sharks or anything like that, or even, like, head plays. Um, but I feel like this is a great alternative because it's cheap. It works. I, I... I couldn't really tell the difference between these and head plays, and that's probably because I'm a beginner. Um, the battery life uh, was great. It never really died on me, and there's a warning. There's a little indicator in there that says that the battery's dying. Um, it'll probably warn you probably a good 20 minutes before it starts dying. Um, and it'll, pro like, once that starts blinking, you probably could fly it for a, a good 10 to, 15, 10 to 20 minutes, something like okay, that. Okay, so low voltage indicator or battery indicator. So that's nice because the head plays don't have that. And you're going to have to put like a little lipo checker on the on the balance lead or something because there's just no way to tell when this thing's about to die and you're in the sky and it's just, right? Yeah, yeah and it also has like the scan feature, which is nice. Um, you can change what the image looks like through contrast and uh, just other things. Um, there's a, there's speakers in here, which is crazy. Uh, me and Sam were scanning through and we found some sort of TV channel and we could actually hear what was going on in the TV. But yeah, I like them a lot. Um, yeah, so I think this is like the best, from my experience, best first pair of FPV goggles. Yeah. This is a little sharp edge. What I found is if you tighten the top like hard enough, then the kind of the goggles will kind of like lean up towards when you put them on. So this part won't even touch, so that's how I fix that. Okay, and but you could also like sand that down or oh, something. Oh yeah, you could sand it. Yeah, you you can, can modify it. Yeah. You could put something there, a cushion or something. A piece of foam. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I also found there's like a gap between my face and this part. Did you find that there was like light getting in there? Um, honestly, when I started flying it, I never noticed all that. I mean, I, I noticed too when I was like inspecting it that light can shine through here, but I mean, as FPV flyers, we usually try to find shade <laughs> because we don't want to be sitting in the sun. And then I didn't really find that as a problem, even if the sun was hitting me. I was too into the flying, honestly. You're too focused on the screen. It didn't even matter. Yeah. Well, I like how the battery is all conveniently stored up there, but that also puts the weight of the battery in front of your face instead of behind your face, like with the head plays. A little bit more heavy. It is nose top heavy. heavy. It is nose heavy for sure. But tightening this made a difference. But yeah, that's I like them a lot. Thanks for letting me use them. Oh yeah, no, you can keep them. I don't even, I don't even need those. Oh, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Let's fly. Yeah. Where is he? Where is he? There he is. There. There. All right. 
Doing flip sticks to the ground, huh? Oh my god. <laughs> kind of just frisbeed. Pretty hard, let's see. Anything snaps? Uh, nice. <laughs>